everyone. Welcome back. I'm just going to load this all up again. My video comments. And I'll plug this in. Here we go. And I'll give everyone a second to come in. I think we're okay. So everyone, welcome. I'm Fifi McLeod, and I'm Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. I go live in my Facebook group, and I have um, affiliates. I go live in their Facebook groups as well, and I upload all of my videos to YouTube. So if everyone can either join group or like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be helpful. And I really appreciate it, guys. So um, we'll get right into this. So basically in front of me, I have all kinds of um, different um, things that we've created for collage fodder. So I showed you guys before I've done waxing. So I've got papers and I've got different things that have been, have been waxed. I have... This one here that I did with um, Mud Podge, where we've taken um, a piece of wax paper and I put down um, these are sewing patterns. So I've got this ready to go for collage and I've got some other ones as well. So those are in a pile there. And then I went ahead and I did some pulls and prints on my gel plate. So I'm going to quickly show you these and they're all done on deli papers. So I'm going to easily be able to pull bits and pieces and collage with them. So these are just, some of them are on copy paper. Here's another one that's um, a deli sheet. And I wanted to share too, a little hack with your um, gel plate. If you take a cheap bottle of black acrylic paint that is um, from the dollar store, so I believe that is, um, uh, what brand is that? Um, I believe it's Deco Art. Um, craftsmith any of those ones um, you just have a tiny bit of water and what I've done is so I've watered it down just a little bit and then I put my stencil down and then when I did the um, when I did the stenciling over top I used my brayer to add it and I let it completely dry when I pulled off the stencil so when you water it down a little bit it gives you this really neat like fragmentation sort of feel to it and it looks like um, the same kind of result that you would get from from, from like um, a light acrylic ink. So I just wanted to share that and all I did was just water down um, a cheap bottle of um, acrylic, black acrylic paint that I got from the dollar store. So that gave me that same effect and that's how I've gotten all of these. So this is a very thick layer that I did and when you do a thin layer you get sort of um, a feel like this where it kind of looks like um, like a wool carving or painting or something. It looks um, old and um, ancient sort of thing. So this is going to go great in um, some upcoming journals and things that I'm working on and I'm going to use them for collage. And I've used copper and gold acrylic paints to pull them so they're metallic. And I use Seth's new stencils that I have so I'm really excited. And thank you, they have like almost like a, a textured feel to them. And I just did two basic print uh, pulls, one in copper, one in gold. And I'm just really excited for these. So I just wanted to quickly show you these two and how I did them. And these are like a mono print of, and I use that same. So this is again on white paper, that same effect. And it's kind of almost got like a chalky finish because I've added the, I've added the water to it. And then the final print was this result. And that's just by adding a little bit of water to the, and this is where I braid off. So again, I can have little bits and pieces of that. And this one I did with, um, um, my that was the final pull off of the of what I had on my plate still after doing the prints. So that's where I got all this from. And then I just used my, um, my acrylic marker, um, my Liquitex um, paint marker. And then I got this neat effect from it here where I just did some random mark making with my Poshkas and my Liquitex markers. So I'm excited. So 
what I've done with this, I did some prints. So we have these for our, um, our journal and our upcoming journals that, that I'm working on. But um, what I've done, guys, is, you know, when you're using your paper towels and you're cleaning up your mess as you go, um, this is going to be super fun. So I've started saving these. So these are kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're pulling things off the plate and you're cleaning up a mess, um, put these all aside and save them. So what I've done, so I wanted to show you the black so you could see really well. I've run this through my sewing machine. So I stitched it in a grid pattern. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect, as you guys can see. I've got some that are thick. I've got some that are thinner. And you just want to do it sort of in a grid pattern. And the more wonky it is with a combination of thin and thick lines going in either direction, um, the better result that we're going to have. So I'm just going to quickly show you these, and I'll show you what we're going to do with these. So here's the first one. And this one's like, like I said, it's mostly black. So this one was an ink pickup. This was me cleaning up um, an ink mess. Actually, I think that was the black acrylic paint ink that I made. Like, so you can see how I have uh, a bit of the stenciling here. So this one here is just for me using um, infusions and some of my, um, my dye sprays. This one here is, as you can see, I've got the, the grid lines sort of from the, um, from the stencils. And again, just pulling up, pulling up um, a bit of a mess. And then the great thing too, um, so you can use the big sheets like this that you have, or you can do fragments. So I have both. I have the big sheets, plus I have these fragments that I did. And don't worry so much if things are ripped. I just kind of embraced that and just went right over it, even though it's um, it's ripped or it's torn. And again, um, I've got texture paste on some of this. So all that's done is given this a little bit of um, tooth. So I just wanted to share that. So if you're still, if you're cleaning up your, um, your grit paste, your texture paste, your uh, ceramic stucco, any of that stuff, still keep them and just use your use it until you have um, it covered like I do and this one here um, is one of the pull-offs from the stencil and um, I did it in a shape that almost looks like um, it could be um, some kind of a like an old parchment fragment from a book so that's kind of where my mindset's at with this right so same thing guys it's all sewn in the grid patterns so I just I have a whole heap of them here and I'm just going to show you. And again, I've got rips and I've got tears here and there. And that I just stitched back together because that was a huge tear. And that's okay. It's just going to give it some character. And it gives it um, a little bit more stability. So this is another little piece here with the same kind of fragmentation sort of uh, feel. Like papyrus or ancient paper or something. So that's kind of what I was going for with that. Some are really... Um, some are really inked up and some are not. So I wanted to share that as well. So this one here has infusions. When we were doing um, the little pieces for the journal. That is um, Green Man. If you guys can see. And then you can choose too what side you prefer. And that's Rusting Powder from Paper Artsy. And then over here. I have that one, which is all dyed. And this was from when I was doing my fall tags. So some of them are from that. And that I've got the ink sprays and the different things on there. So super excited. Yeah, that's um, Crackling Campfire. So like I've got like spray bits and all kinds of stuff. So I'm super excited. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these. So let's start with that black one so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing because the black's showing up really well. I'll just put these right here to my side. Okay. So make sure we're in focus. And we're going to take our spray bottle, just full of water right now. And we're going to start in this corner up here. And we're going to give this a good spray. Okay. And then I'm going to take this in my hand. And I'm just going to start 
tearing it. Okay, like that. Yeah. In between all of our stitching. Okay. And what I want to do, the areas where I have the um, a lot of ink, I'm going to leave them. But I want to have it that we're tearing out. Hold on. We're tearing that out. It might seem a little bit finicky at first. There we go. Just until we can get a good, a good kind of rip and tear. So we're going to start there. Because you don't want to tear out your um, your sewing either. So I've got here and the next one here. There we go. And the next one here. Just like that. Then we can kind of do it in a motion like this. There we go. So if you guys can see that. And then you're kind of gathering it like this. Where you have that left. So you have more of like a, a textile sort of feel to it. So we're just playing with that. And we're going to keep going here. We're essentially we're removing the um, um, the paper towel in between our stitched layers. If you guys can see that, but again, being mindful that we're not ripping our our stitching out. And I'm not doing the whole entire thing. So for me, that's perfect for this whole corner. See that? So I have a fragmented piece here, but I'm going to keep the black square here. But then I want to come down anywhere where I have the white. So all through here, where, we're, where we have these white spots. So here, there we go. I didn't have it wet enough, sorry guys. There, because this should tear fairly easily, right? Okay. That's what we're doing. We're just creating like little tear marks. Like that. So this might seem a little finicky at first, but the results are absolutely amazing. When this is dry, this is going to give us an effect that is a, like a textile. So this is like creating a fabric textile without having fabrics. It's amazing. And I wanted to let you guys know, this is a technique done by a lady named Shelley Rhodes. And it's from her book, Fragmentation and Repair for Mixed Media and Textile Artists. So I've purchased the book. It's on its way from Amazon. And we're going to be working out of her book in the next upcoming months. So I'm starting with this technique. And then we will go from there. And we'll, we'll be doing um, other stuff in her book as well. And then I'll add my own twist and my own takes on things. Because you'll see. So this is basically from her book. Um, of adding the holes to each of your, your spots. But I'm going to do other things to make this my own as well. as we go. So you can, she showed that you can use any um, paper towel that's covered in your mixed media products, whether it be, um, I just discovered that it's, it, it does just fine with um, your texture paste. It just gives them more tooth. But she shows them used with acrylic paints. And as you can see guys, I've done it with inks. And infusions. 
And she also did acrylic inks in her tutorial. So you can use any of your products. There we go. So some I'm tearing out. And I love how, how grungy that looks, if you guys can see that. So anywhere where I've got the white, I want to pretty much remove that. So she did, she wasn't going based on that. She was just adding them all over the place. I'm doing it in a more controlled way where um, I'm taking out the white spaces and I'm leaving where I have the, the inks just because it's going to give it like that much more character. So I'm not um, segregating it to like an area or um, being precise about, and I don't mind that rip there either. That's great at the bottom. So yeah, where the bottom is, I didn't do the extra stitching on a lot of it because I wanted my my edges to, if you guys can see like this, I want my edges to appear like torn and tattered. Yeah, like that. So I'm just using my nails and I'm not worrying too much about how this is going to um, layer be presented because again, we're going to use bits and pieces of it. So I'm happy right to here. So this whole section here I want to take out because this is all white. And you can do the whole square, part of a square. You don't have to do the whole thing. And again, you just, and you can, you don't have to be too fussy about it like I'm being. You can just keep tearing into it. Just, there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we're going to do some different stuff. So I'm going to do this one based on her tutorial, and then I'm going to show you some different things with the with the other ones. I want to rust one um, with our with our paper artsy rusting powder, and there's all kinds of stuff that I want to try. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it. I'm not too worried about the logistics of these squares. I just want to make sure that there's enough of them that it's going to look really torn and tattered. So your your inked areas are going to look different than your acrylic paint because your acrylic paint are going to give it like a plastic coat. So I just wanted to share that so you can get different looks based on the different products that you're using. So that's kind of fun too, right? And then by adding different products, we're going to get different results. So I'm super happy with this already. And then see, and I'm tearing out some of the area here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll move it up. So this really looks torn. And I'm just, yeah, and I'm down to the string. And that's okay too, because that's kind of what you want for it to really look like textiles. And then I can, oh, that has to be wet here. Do that bottom corner here. Because this is all white space. There we go. I found this tutorial on YouTube and I was shocked. And then um, I thought, wow, there's so many things that we can do with this. Because she just had a basic one with her acrylic inks. And I was thinking, wow, for like, you know, mixed media. And um, I want to get into doing textile arts and different things. So I'm super excited. And I'll just keep showing you guys um, techniques and the process of how to do these things as we go. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy the book. I'm going to demo um, a lot of her techniques. So I just wanted to share that. Because the, the book after shipping is um, $50 in Canada. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm going to be demoing it. Here we go. And I'm just ripping and tearing. And some you can remove the whole section. So it's more of a, if you guys can see, that's more of a controlled sort of torn with bits missing. There we go. Uh, let's get rid of this square right here.
Yep, so what, what I've done is I've used the paper towels to clean up an ink mess or um, an acrylic paint mess. And then I've taken the dried paper towel and I also have some that's covered in texture based. So just giving it more tooth. So um, what I've done is I've once they're dry, I take them over to my sewing machine and I stitch a grid pattern. So I stitch it from one way in zigzags, and then I stitch it from the other way in zigzags. So this has been ran through my sewing machine. So I just wanted to share that. And that's how I have this grid pattern. And then we're making our own textiles by ripping, by wet, re wetting it, and then ripping out little squares here and there. And Tammy's um, done some brilliant um, specimens too, guys. She's posted them, and hers are done with um, like our decorative napkins. So you can do that as well. Where you're not using the inked up paper towels, you're using um, like our decorative um, napkins for decoupage. So I just wanted to share that. And hers turned out beautiful as well. And she didn't ink hers, she just um, she just added um, the stitching and then the water. And that's what I'm doing. So again, in a very controlled way. Um, I can leave a lot of this. Or I can... It's like whatever you want to do. I think some sections having having it filled in will be really neat looking just like this and then with some tattered with some tattered edges. So this is the end result here guys. Hope you can see that for this one. And I'm going to put that just over here to dry. Okay we're going to move on to the next one. So now I want a smaller one. So let's do um, one that we don't really have a lot of stuff on. Because um, I want a rust one. I'm loving this. So this one, we're just going to tatter that. Um, this one here doesn't really have too much. So this just has like a little bit of, um, a little bit of stuff here. And we could even take this a step further, guys, and I could um, break this in half. So this is the other thing, too. Like, I just want to kind of convey, like, I'm... Yeah, let's just, because we want to make this kind of look fragmented, right? There we go. So I've just kind of cut it all willy-nilly, not worrying about anything. Okay, now I'm, instead of taking water, I'm going to take my vinegar, and I have that in a spray bottle as well. So here we go, guys. We're going to take the vinegar. Come on. And I'm going to spray this whole thing. Come on. I'm going to wet it really well in vinegar. Come on. Then I'm going to go with my Paper Artsy Rusting Powder. And I want to really good generous amount and I can take my finger and I can spread it around it has a metallic smell but I wouldn't say that it's toxic I wouldn't want to breathe it it's powder right I wouldn't want to actually breathe the powder in to your lungs I don't think that would be good for you um, I'm just you know I keep my face at a good distance away from this and um, I'm just using some vinegar, so that's what activates it. And when I get it on my skin, I'm not really too worried. I just make sure that I'm quickly um, that I'm not keeping it on my skin. I'm using either alcohol or water to get it off, or soap and water. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm not really too worried about um, getting it on me. There. 
So I want to just make sure that this is like kind of saturated or we're just going to have like blobs of rust. So I just want to have it sort of like worked in a little bit. So I'm using my fingers. I'm just, there we go. And how this product works is you apply it and hours later it starts activating with the, with the vinegar. It doesn't do it right away. Sometimes it does depending on where you live, but like if, I think if you're in a more a humid place, um, it would react right away, but I'm in damp Nova Scotia, so it doesn't. So we have our rusting powder on here all around, and I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to rip it. There we go. So again, I didn't use water for this one. I used vinegar because that is what activates my rusting powder. And another little trick with the rusting powder, so you can do it this way, where it's like in a kind of like a semi-controlled way, where it is um, sprinkled on, on top of um, the layer of vinegar, and then the layer on top of the rusting powder is vinegar. Or you can get like a little dish, like a little metal dish or something, and you can... Um, Put a little bit in there with, with vinegar and then it activates and then you just keep reactivating that little bit with water and you can use it like watercolor paint. Like it, it gives you like a watercolor effect. And then all you have to do is just keep spraying the, um, the vinegar on it. Because once it activates you just keep, like, keep um, wetting it every time you want to use it and then you have that like act like an access to you right so I just wanted to share that so it's another great way to use the rusting powder and then I can kind of tear this up wherever I want the yep so start saving your um your paper towels after you're doing um, wet mixed media stuff and then I will show you guys what the results are like once this is dry too so I have spots here where I have the mixed media and then I'm gonna have spots where it's all rusted so we're gonna do that on a couple of these and it's just relaxing and it's great if you're in between projects and you're looking for something to do this is a great thing too and then, or you can mass make them like what I'm doing, and then you have them for, um, and I could even just, yeah, a little bit more to the middle here. And then you can kind of, yeah, just kind of do one of these. And I use very little, as you guys can see. There we go. And you just want to keep activating it there. Once you have it down. You want to make sure that it's saturated and then we can put that one to dry. Okay. And then I'm not worried. I can just come in with the next one and pick up my vinegar that I have sprayed everywhere. Yeah, just like that. So it's great to clean up a mess and it's also great to, I'm going to do the same thing here. Where I'm adding the vinegar and the rusting powder. There we go. And this one will be a little bit more generous, I think. Just like that. And I'm going to do one of these. Just kind of mix it around. There we go. Just like that. Let's try that. Okay, and then we're going to rip it. So you don't really have to think about it too much. Like I was really, you know, the first one just kind of getting the hang of this. But once you kind of see how it how it works, it's just going to be easier as you go. And you don't really have to um, worry too much about how precise it is or how um, how much effort's going into it. I want these 
sides all done too. There we go. There. So that looks really good here. I can scratch out my Those little areas. There we go. There. And then this one here, we're just going to add water. And I'm not too worried. I can just kind of pile these up, guys. So if some gets on the other one, I'm not worried. Then I'm switching back over to my water. So this one here, I'm just going to water it up. And I'm really going for like a tattered look here. Now this one's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to tear and rip because this one is covered in texture paste. So this is just going to give me more of a toothy look. So I just wanted to share that. So it is a little bit harder to, to tear it because we've got the texture paste all over here, but... I think the results are still going to be amazing. There we go. So, and then anywhere where you're pulling it off the string, you're left with like this grid mark that looks like that. So we can do that as well. So you can have like small areas that are torn and then large ones. Where we're actually taking the paper towel out like that and this is more of how she showed how to do it by actually removing squares like that so that's me ripping and tattering and then this is me removing so you can do it either way I like the look of both, and we're going to be working with both. So I just wanted to share that. And some of these are uh, loosely um, stitched. There we go. So if you guys can see that, by actually removing it, it's a totally different look. So you don't have to be too gentle with it either. There we go. And this one I'm not using the rusting powder because I have so many um, beautiful layers of mixed media on here, as long um, as well as um, having the texture paste. So I just wanted to share that. So it's like really textile. So I like that about it. Yeah. So I'm going to completely remove um, some of these sections. And it looks really old and tattered and worn. And it does. It gives you the impression of it being, because of the textile nature of the sewing, the way it's been sewn and stitched, it looks like an old um, piece of fabric that's aged and worn but really all it is is a paper towel so it's pretty amazing and it just gives your project that amazing effect great for our journals and our art journals and our textile um, sort of projects or books that we make there we go so I'm really happy with that and maybe we'll take one out here And I'm just removing now. I'm not worried about um, like a light, if you guys can see the difference. That's just like a light um, tear. But these are actual like square removals, if you guys can see that. That's kind of the difference. 
just to show you something different. Because you can do either. Or both. So I'm loving that. That looks like an old, tattered piece of fabric that's been cast aside and worn right out. There we go. And the paper towel comes off really easily once you have it wet. And then over here, and we'll just tear these like we did the others. Yeah, just for like a fragmented look. There we go. Just like that. All right, so I'm super happy with this one too. And they dry fairly quickly. They're just damp. There we go. I can just keep moving the mess off as we go. And then I'll just throw it all in the garbage when we have this bit of mess left. Um, let's do another one. This one here had the infusions. So let's go ahead. And let me have a look here. So I used, um, let's try this new one because I don't have this one yet. This is Green Man. Let's try, um, a bit jaded. So these are Taper Earthsea Infusions Crystals. And I think these are more of a turquoise blue, opposed to the turquoise green. Let's add some here. And very little goes a very long way, as you guys can see. And then I will activate these crystals. And this would be perfect for my patina journal that I'm doing. And very little. And then we take our water and we're going to activate them. There we go. Just to give it a little bit more something. So you can add um, layers as you go too. So if you feel like, you know, maybe you don't have enough mixed media on here, enough inks, you know, like here's my Seth After Coffee. This is one of my favorites, guys. And it's just such a lush, amazing color. And just add something. And then, of course, I'm just going to, you know, wipe my bottle off because it's a paper towel. Yeah. Super happy. And then you just start ripping and tearing and taking away. So I'm really happy with this, guys. This is going to be something super fun that we can add to our journals and bits and pieces behind stuff, using it in collage and layering. So it's just going to be a lot of fun. So I was super excited when I found this tutorial and I found her book. And um, as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing more tutorials out of it once it comes. And I'm going to be um, demoing some new techniques so we can um, incorporate some of these fun things into her journals. Because who doesn't love some textile, right? And it's such a simple thing. So you can remove like little bits and pieces or you can remove the entire, like the entire window here in each of these. Okay. Then we'll leave some at the bottom here too. So we're still pulling some, but we're not going to pull them all. Anything with like white or just a Give it that little something. There we go. That's great for here. And then let's go up here. Good. You guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, thanks, Morag. Thanks, everyone. It's just so much fun. 
I love trying new things. And then showing you guys how to how to do it. And what and some further ideas of what you can do. But she just showed the stitching of them. I mean we all know how to use our sewing machine, right? And just using water to pull. And I want to take it a step further because we don't just use acrylic paint, we can use anything with this. So like I mentioned, I had texture paste on a couple of these, and I have, um, I love to use my inks and my infusions, and you can use brushos, whatever you have. I'm sure you could use distress crayons. Ooh, maybe we'll do that on one. That'll be fun. Just have to wait till it's dry. Yeah, that's my homework, guys. I'll try distress crayons on one that we do that's dry, just to see what the results are like. There we go. I've got some tears in here. Okay. That here. Let's tear that away all here. Okay, and here. So it's like I want enough tears, but I also want to, um, Oh, I got this really neat green color going here. I don't know. Oh, that could be what happens when you add vinegar. Interesting. Vinegar to infusions. You get this lime green color. All right. We'll have to remember that one. That's where this came from. We're going to get something totally different when we add vinegar to our infusions. That's another idea for a video another day. <laughs> See, guys, experimentation, that's what it is, right? We don't really know till we're playing, and that's the whole thing. Mix your products together and learn how they work. Um, it was funny, because it was explained to me like that when I was in school, guys. When you go to school, like when you go to art school and when you go and you take art classes and things, um, you, you learn all the techniques, right? And all, like, you know, the names for your paintbrushes and all the brush strokes and how things work and, um, you know, traditionally, right? But the key to being a good artist is breaking. So you're basically, you're, you're learning all the rules, right? The rules of art. But the key to being a good artist is how you break those rules. So I just wanted to share that. So, like, you know, some people you know, have said to me, well, Fifi, I don't really feel like an artist because I didn't go to art school and I didn't do this, that, and the other. And, you know, I just try to convey, like, if you are picking up a paintbrush and you are creating, and if you are, you know, um, doing art, then you are, in fact, an artist. I know people who have training who haven't picked up their paintbrushes in 15 years, so you're already 10 steps ahead of them, right? So... I just wanted to share that. So don't ever feel like you can't can't try something or, you know, you can't, um, don't have something to contribute to because everybody does and everybody does things differently. And we sometimes can be our own worst critics. So I just wanted to share that. So, you know, for anybody who's struggling or, you know, I'm still trying to find what I would call my artist voice. And I love how Robin McClendon explains that. We're trying to find our styles and our, you know, our inner voices artistically that, you know, to express um, how we're feeling through our art and how we're, uh, and basically our surroundings and it's influenced by so many things. So I just wanted to share that. And then we develop a style that's true to ourselves. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just enjoying the journey and trying to find my artist's voice and seeing my process and how it's evolved because I mean I mean that that's the thing guys it always evolves and I always tell people to don't ever compare your artwork to somebody else's always compare it to what you've previously done because I can see in my own journey how I'm making leaps and bounds and progress in terms of different techniques and different things that I'm doing um, maybe I've tried something and it didn't really work and then I went back to it maybe a year later um, with more product knowledge and things and it's like game-changing right so 
you know, we evolve as, um, as artists and it's part of our journey. So that's my whole thing, guys. Just embrace your journey and do what makes you happy and try new things. So I'm loving that. That is great. So we've got a little bit of bits of both, a little bit of fragmentation up here, and then we've got actual missing, missing um, bits down here. So I'm loving that. And I'm seeing we've got, that was so interesting. We got this, from the green, we got this bright sort of neon um, yellow, almost like this green that's um, almost like twisted citron mixed with um, lemonade. Lemonade? Squeeze lemonade. That's what that reminds me of from the vinegar. So that's really cool. Now we're just going to keep going here, guys. I'm having fun. All right. So this one doesn't really have too much on it either. So we've tried a bit jaded. The other one I want to try is my golden sands. I don't know if I have one. Let's see up here if I have an opened one. Because if I do... I do. I have one open right here. Golden Sands. So I don't want to open that one yet. Okay. So I'm going to wet this with water. Really good. So any of the ones that we don't really have too much product on here, I'm just going to add it as we go. So this is Golden Sands. And I'm already loving that. This is a nice, it shows like it being a real orange color in the bottle, but it's yellow. So this is amazing. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's sand, like a sand sort of texture. There we go. Maybe some more in here. That is quite a bit that I've added. And then by adding minimal water, this is another technique I love with these um, infusions by adding just a little bit of water I'm not getting the undertone so much of the walnut stain and and it goes on sort of thicker so it kind of looks more textile when it's in a more controlled way and I'm not um, allowing it to wick out far there we go and then I don't want to do too much because I'm loving that effect here so let's just kind of pull this out. And we'll do this in areas that have a little less. Like here, here, here. There we go. I'm loving that. I don't really have too much over here, so um, let's try this one. This might be a little bit lighter. Okay, that's the new one. And this one is called Lemoncello. So again, we're still that nice golden color. 
but this might be a little bit lighter. And I'm still going to give it that same effect where it's like, um, There we go. So it is a little lighter, but I'm going to give it that same effect where it's like um, gritty sand uh, texture on there. There we go. We're going to rip some. And it doesn't matter if you can do big squares, you can do little squares. Tammy said on the napkins she preferred the little squares. And I'm going for super grungy, so the combination of both, I'm like embracing it. These are very big squares I did here. We're not going to do all these today, but I just wanted to try some different techniques. And let's do one in micas. Mica sprays. That'll be fun. So even if you have like paper towels that only have like one or two, um, little um, bits of things. Like, see, I've got that all over me. I'm just going to embrace that and whip up my mess with it. So we have more on here. Um, yeah, we'll do this one. So I've got some of that. And let's add some mica. Okay, put the infusions here, back. There we go. I'll keep my resting powder handy. And right here, I have my sprays, so these are the Tim Holtz ones, um, let me see here, I'm looking for like a patina sort of, yeah, there's green, this one here is a Delusions, um, Polished Jade, Shiny Bobble by Tim Holtz, oh, not pink, um, oh, that's pewter. Crooked Broomstick, Flickering Candle, Bubbling Cauldron, that's not the color I'm going for, um, let's see here, ooh, there's the black one by Delusions, Mary Mint is nice too, let's pull that one, um, Sorry guys, I need to label the tops of these so I can see my colors immediately. Um, I don't have all of them, I just have a few. Um, there we go. That darker blue by Delusions. Okay, so essentially I have um, uh, three Delusions by um, Diane Wevely. And I have Black Marble, Polish Jade, and London Blue. And then I have two Distress Mica Stains, Merry Mint and Shiny Bobble. So I don't have all of Tim's, but um, I, have, I have the ones that I like. So last year's and the second year's, but I don't have um, the, the first year's um, Christmas, but I have all of the... I have all the Halloween ones. The Halloween ones seem to be more my jam. Okay, so let's add some, yeah, some shiny bobble in here like that. And 
we want to make sure all of our mica's off the bottom. So we're just going to give these a really good shake. Sorry guys, this just takes a hot minute. My little bolt bottom's not even moving yet. There we go, finally. Oh, and the little trick I wanted, little tip I wanted to um, let you guys know too, it doesn't matter the brand, um, Tim Holtz, Savapter, um, Delusions, any of them, any of the sprays from any of the companies, um, they do clog, and um, it just depends on what um, climate you live in. So if you're somewhere like me, um, so if you're, if you're somewhere hot, you can store them like this. And um, Tim recommends that because he lives in Arizona, right? So if you live in California, Arizona, probably Florida, anywhere that's hot and humid, um, your seals and the plastic expands. So you can lay them like this. You can store them like that where you put them in a tin or something and you lay them, lay them like this. I can't do that. I live in Nova Scotia. Anyone that lives in Canada who has... Um, really cold climate. Um, I would say England, um, in the UK, anything like that. We've got real damp. Maine, New England, we're damp and cold. And any place that's damp and cold, your seals are all going to contract. So we experience the contracting of not only our seals in here, but also our little tubes in here. So I don't have a problem with these in the summertime. Even right now, I have an ambient temperature in here. But once it starts to get cold and you have any kind of damp coming into your craft room or your studio, um, be mindful that these do clog. And it's just because your, your um, little nozzle in here, your nozzle and your little thing in here has, um, has contracted. So all you have to do is give them a water bath. So don't worry about taking out your thing and unclogging it or whatever. All you have to do is get a little container of warm water and just put your mica into warm water and warm it up to like an ambient temperature and everything expands. So I just wanted to share that. And that's what you do with, with your any of your ink sprays because the rest of the year, like you'll see here, they are flawless and they don't have a problem. It's just when we start getting cold, that's when we run into that problem. So I just wanted to share that. So that's my way around it. Just give everything a little water bath. Like it doesn't even have to be a big deal. If you know you want to use your mica sprays. Um, so that's any of the ones with mica. I don't have this problem with oxides or um, or with um, uh, with any of the ink sprays. It's just the ones with the mica. So so Tim Holtz has ones with mica that are spray stains. Um, those are like the metallics. Seth Aptor has them with, with metallics. And then, of course, um, all these mini ones um, that are seasonal, the Distress Mica Stains, and these Shimmer Sprays by Delusions. So there's nothing wrong with the product. It's going to happen regardless of who makes it and where it comes from. It's the bottles. So just, you know, like a Tupperware container, fill it full of um, a little bit of uh, warm water and just bring your bottles in and put them in whenever you want to do that in the winter months. So that's just my only suggestion with that. Let me use this one. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining, love. Yeah, so it's nothing we're doing wrong. It's just the nature of plastic. And then that's the thing too, guys. So for us in Canada and, again, UK and any of us in damp, cold weather, do not ever, ever, ever lay your and store your... Um, spray bottles on the side like this, any of them, inks, oxides, micas, none of them, because when you come back in your craft room tomorrow morning, if I were to leave that like that, my entire bottle of my mica would be on my service, because it contracts and they leak everywhere. So I just wanted to share that. Don't ever 
store them like that. It's okay if you're in Arizona or a place that's hot and your seals all expand. So if you're there, great, do it, but not if you're <laughs> not if you're living anywhere near me. <laughs> Don't do it. I uh, lo I've already lost half a bottle of um, Crooked Broomstick, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. So it's just helpful information. Here we go. We're gonna use the uh, the black one. It's called Black Marble. Oh, and it's interesting too. And I find even when you have um, the same or similar colors from different companies, they're all different. So, like, I have Seth's black and I have Tim's black. So, I find Tim's is more of a gray black. It's like a exactly that black soot. It has undertones of gray, whereas Seth's has undertones of like a dark purple. So, I just wanted to share that. So, even though. Um, we're using products that are all kind of similar in color. You're going to get different variations between, um, say, uh, Tim's Distress line and Seth's Eyes Ink line. There, so I'm super happy with this, and I don't even feel like I need to, um, like, spray it to activate it. I just want to, um, to spray it to, to start tearing. So this is great. This is like a mixed media sort of feel with the sprays. Um, you know what? Just to show you the difference, I'm going to grab some of sets. I just have them in the basket at the opposite side. Um, his mic is here too. This is his, nope, that's caramel. Butterscotch caramel. Um, here we go, one of my favorites, Copper Buff. And his are 2.7 full ounces. Um, yes, you can make alcohol, alcohol sprays, absolutely. And all you do, um, I find that it's better to make them with reinkers because they're just more concentrated, opposed to like using um, your, um, your, like your, your actual sprays or your ink pads. So with reinkers, and then all you do is just maybe two drops, um, with a distress ink or oxide reinker, and then mixing it without, with, um, your isopropyl alcohol. And again, another staple in here, guys, with the alcohol inks and stuff, I have 99% and I order that from um, Amazon. So again, we're just really shaking this until that's all off the bottom. And I love the bronze, if you can see that. There's so much mica and Seth Apters. Just adding subtle hints. And then I've got yeah, bronze shimmer. So one's bronze, one's more like copper. Almost like a rose gold. Yeah, you could do that with the powdered eyeshadows. Yeah, because the eye powdered eyeshadows contain like it. But I have the, um, I'll show you. This is what I use. And this I find to be the best products. They're from Decor. So they're artist quality. And these are called Prolax Powdered Pigments. So these are mica. If you can see that. And you can get them in the containers that are this big. Or you can get them in the teeny tiny containers, which are like a sample. And then you mix them with gum arabic. And you can use either one. I have Jackson's Gum Arabic that's liquid. Or you can add these to um, the powdered version and then you add the water to make your pigment. Um, you can add these literally to any mixed media product. So I can add these to alcohol. I can, and, um, but if I'm mixing them with alcohol, I want two drops of gum, of the liquid gum Arabic to give it binder. 
because that's essentially what you're doing. You have to add binder to it, right? So that's how I would make like a watercolor medium sort of thing. You can add this to acrylic paint. You can add this to um, any of my um, my ink sprays, or if I wanted to make my own, I could do that. Um, I can add this to any of my um, mixed media products, like my texture paste, my um, effects paste, texture powder, anything like that. You can add mica to that. So I just wanted to share. So this is the product I use. Because this one here is artist grade, and it's... And when you're mixing stuff like that, you want a good quantity of it too, right? So I just wanted to share that. So we'll get right back to ripping. Oh, and so that one's bronze, and then I have gold. Gold mine is beautiful too. Um, sunflower. I'm just missing his, um, Seth's, uh, there's two pinks and a purple, like a purpley pink that I'm missing. Uh, Cassie's, I think it's called, um, that I'm missing, because I have the rest. One of my favorites is tea, and, uh, rusty saffron. Those are, like, my go-to. And, of course, coffee. And I just bought another one, because, yeah, I'm just about out of that one. And the rusty saffron should be... here. Uh, honey is nice too. Honey and tea. Here it is. Rusty Saffron. That's one of my favorites. And I have the pearl, but the gold is really nice. This is called Gold Mine. Let's give this a go. This is like a true gold. Tim's is more brass, so I just wanted to share that. Is this like a brass gold where this is like even truer than flickering candle and the flickering candle would be my favorite gold of Tim Holtz but then if I want gold gold I use Seth Aptors because it's just gorgeous see and we're already starting to clog that's okay and then in a pinch pull it out and add splatters that's another great effect if you don't want to spray and you want splatters, this is excellent. There we go. And a technique I wasn't even planning on demoing. <laughs> that works, right? This needs, like I said, um, and it's very cold. It was at the back of my, of my unit there. And that's the other thing, too, where in your craft room or your studio or you're storing your inks. My sprays are at my desk, and I have a very large drafty window in front of me. So that's the other huge factor in here, too. So that's why I'm getting, you know, this is very cold, and it's minus four outside today. But even though I have a heater on in here, my desk is still quite cool from it. There, so that just gives us some splatters. So this would just need, um, again, just a water bath. And I'm probably going to find that with any of the ones that are that are sitting there. Okay, and then we're going to go right back into it with the water. And pull out some of these areas. Like right here. And as you get going, it gets a lot quicker, too. I was being way more careful. But um, I proved that you don't really have to, because your strings aren't really going anywhere. So anywhere we have white or something you um, want to separate, like a little area that you might want to separate, like I want to separate the black from this, so we're going to do that by adding our textile bit here. Here we go. There we go. I'll pull that section here.
there. I'm loving that. Maybe here. And you can do stenciling, you can do anything. So even if I decided I wanted it inked up, I could come in with a stencil. But um, I just find, too, just using the ones from your leftover product to be good. I'm just giving you guys some examples of some of the things that we can um, have on here to, to rip and tear up. There we go. We'll move it this way. So it doesn't matter what angle we look at this, too. I'm loving that sort of um, neat... Uh, pattern from the stencil here so I'm just going to leave that alone but I'm going to take out like this whole area here there we go these are very big squares here so again that's what I like to do the combination of the big and the small when I'm stitching it so some and and you don't have to have those lines straight either like you can make them wonky or they're kind of like on an angle I have a couple that I've done like that where they're not straight and I did that on purpose so that it just gives it more character when you're taking off the layers. Yes, um, so it, bind, it it adds binder to it, that's right. Or um, the ink and the, um, it'll also prevent the um, ink from sticking, like the micro from sticking to the ink. If you don't have binder. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah. There, I'm loving that. So I don't have a whole lot here that I'm... Well, maybe I'll just tear that. And just... Yeah. That's good. Just through here. There. And we can kind of... And then what you can do too, you can bunch this like this. So you still have like a thick sort of piece there hanging if you want it. There we go. And we can also pull it out. You don't have to have it like that. So you've like creative freedom with this, guys. You can do all kinds of different things. Or you're just leaving like what's hanging here, right? I like that. And then... We'll pull some out over here too, and then we'll call this done. Like right here. These tiny little ones here, that's great. Just to kind of show you something different. So, yeah, some I've done really close together. To just give it a little bit of character. Just like that. There we go. that one. That nice blue one. We'll get rid of this one because it's white. There's nothing really there. Okay. There we go. So you just kind of pick and choose what squares you want to leave, which ones you want to pull out, and it just adds that something really interesting. So again, I do, you don't have to do a whole lot of them. Like You can just do you know, a few here and there. And then you add, like, you use bits and pieces of it when we're cutting it all up. So that, that's a lot of fun. So I just wanted to come live today, guys, and show you this. And um, we're going to be using um, things like this in our, in, our, um, in our next series, that we're like in our journal series that we're doing. So super fun. And I'm going to add this to the collage pile. So now we have, I've got sheets that I've done in beeswax. 
I've got the collage fodder here that we did on the gel plate. Plus I have other ones that we've done together before. Those I did off camera and I have some that we did on camera. So I have those. And then I have these beautiful textiles. And I have this pile here that I want to go through. And I'll post some pictures of them in group, guys, um, of the finished results. I'm probably going to add some more. Like, um, I'll show you. Here's the Rusty Saffron. So this is the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Spray in... Um, crackling campfire that's one of my favorite colors for doing fall and then see we can add some assess here too that kind of look like um, that kind of look like rust and then add some tea here's some assess tea the colors are just wow mm -hmm. if you guys can see that and totally different from tints and that's what I love about them and they all kind of play together and then um, we'll add some more coffee. Yeah, my coffee is here. And even just a small, there we go. Just that little something. So again, and you just keep adding to it. And then we can do this one next. And we have, um, I have um, a little stack here of some more. And um, so don't feel like you have to do them in a square either, guys. So then I have this one here. So this is cut like a frag fragment. The rest of the paper towel was white. And I was like, you know what, that's just for time's sake. And I just, you know, um, did it like that. See, some of my lines are wonky. And I've done it more on a more on an angle. And we can do the same thing, guys, where we're just coming in with some tea. So I love those like little symbols going there. Add some tea spray like that. And some rusty saffron right in here like this and just build it up so if you've got like blank spots you can just fill it in with your with your sprays and we'll add some dark here too with the coffee there we go i love that with the splatters all right so just play with it and have fun and uh feel free guys post your results and how you're using these in your work so that's what i'm going to be doing for the next bit too we're going to get these done and we're going to start using these in the journals and i'm hoping to come back on friday um, with our next tutorial, but I am working on our digital kit, guys. I'm 15 pages in, and I'm aiming to have that done by the 1st of December. So, so I am hoping to have that up this week. So, um, depending on how far I am with the kit, will depend on whether or not, um, Friday's video happens. So I'm just going to keep that, um, up in the air right now but I'll let you guys know for sure and if I am live we're gonna just continue with our book and I wanted to show you quickly to where we're at with this because like I said right now it's a hot mess which it is so we've got our um, we've got our effects paste they're all dry and then this one here we have the rust in the background some texture paste here over top of um, our, our uh, die cuts, our Tim Holtz die cuts, and I have numbers and grit paste, uh, the, one of the Seth Aptor symbols uh, from a stencil and grit paste, and yeah, the background is all um, rusting powder. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. So I'm loving the rusting powder, guys. And then I've added some of the um, Finnebear, um effects paste in the brown here so again it looks like a hot mess because this is just our preliminary layers these are going to be underneath everything else that goes on over top so our next sort of thing that we're going to be doing is um getting these all to like a neutral where we're blending these all together and then we can do the next parts and add the gilding waxes and then the the top layers so i just wanted to share that so you're you're always going to get this hot mess sort of look before it's um a finished refined piece okay so i will see everybody hopefully back friday and if not i'll keep you guys posted and i also have some unboxing videos i'm going to be doing this week as well so i'll keep you guys posted and i'll let you know when that's going to happen all right thank you guys so much have a fabulous day and i'll see you back soon thanks everyone bye